Welcome to Cloud and Clear, the podcast by SADA for innovative business leaders and technology enthusiasts, where we explore how Google Cloud is transforming the industry and what that means to you. Now, here's your host, Tony Safoyan. So, welcome today in a special um, isolation edition of Cloud and Clear. <laughs> starring our very own Heather Summers, someone who I've been waiting to get on for a long time. And I think the timing right now is better than ever because of uh, so much of the work that what we do enables exactly this environment, which we're all being forced into uh, as we speak. So uh, big old welcome to Heather Summers. Welcome to Cloud and Clear. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, Tony. I appreciate it. You've already been contributing to a lot of tips. I see just going out there into the into uh, into the internet world of LinkedIn and other places. Um, so I thought, you know, why don't we just talk live and put this out as soon as possible? Because this is a dramatic shift for a lot of people, isn't it? Yeah, it's been interesting. I've got um, even myself. I'm dealing with doctor's appointments and things through meets and hangouts now, which um, because of telehealth, you know. Relaxing the the HIPAA regulations a little bit, we're seeing video conferencing with just our doctor's visits. We're seeing it with um, my physical therapist contacted me and said, "Do you need a, a session online?" My son's trumpet teacher is doing his lessons online, so uh, <laughs> we're seeing it everywhere. Video conferencing throughout for everyone. So it's very interesting. Interesting times. So before we dive too deeply into into that um can we talk about just sort of setting the stage with um what you do at sada and then a little bit about your background of how we got together uh to begin with yeah uh, so my department is the digital transformation group so we come in after you've been on mail calendar and contacts and that's usually our initial relationship with you is You've come to us to get off of your legacy product and on to Gmail. And after you have that three month or one year relationship with us, then you go to what's called a customer success manager and they check on your progress and work with you from that point on. Well, during those conversations with your customer success manager, um, a lot of times you might tell us about pain points that you might be having. You want a dashboard for what you're doing at your company, or you're looking for forms to, um, we just had this from a, a newspaper group the other day. He said, hey, my people need to work from home and I need a form to keep track of what they're taking home with them. So when this whole thing is over, I can get that equipment back. And so that was where my group can come in and assist you is really using the G Suite tools to the best advantage. So we're seeing this over and over with different um, groups of our customers of trying to really leverage these products because they are so cloud friendly. Look, we've been doing this a long time at SADA, but you yourself are sort of part of that rare population of people, which there are not that many, who've been doing adoption change management training on G Suite for like a very long time. So G Suite has been around for 15 years and I've been doing it now this year for eight. So yeah, like you said, very unusual. There's a small population of us that didn't work for Google. Now, obviously Google has a ton of people who have been doing this for a very long time. But for those of us outside of Google, I can count them on two hands of how many of us have been in this business for this long. By the way, even even the people within Google who are doing it eight years ago probably are doing something else now. So like that, <laughs> that, that eight years of experience is like... I have a love affair with training that started 25 years ago with Microsoft Office. And I was a Microsoft Office trainer for those 20 years and started it in, you know, elementary school <laughs> and um, went ahead and like really embraced that technology. And then I saw the writing on the wall, right? Like we were offering classes for 2013 and people were still on 2007. And Microsoft had really taught people to wait right? There, it wasn't mm -hmm. like an Apple phone where you go wait in line for the latest and greatest one. You're like, oh, it's going to have glitches. I need to wait until the glitches are worked out. So we really saw this lack of adoption. And when I looked around the landscape, 
I saw Google and I really thought that, hmm, you know, is this something I want to bet on? Because there's Salesforce and other SaaSes out there, but it was just so exciting, all the work they were doing with nonprofits, to be honest. And that's how I got into the business is I started working with nonprofits and then I started working with Dale Carnegie, which is how to deal with difficult people. You know, how to win friends and deal with difficult people. So mm-hmm. that was such an exciting group and it was international and a lot of the um, nonprofits were international and Google was giving these services away for free to nonprofits. So that really attracted me to the company and I really wanted to be a part of that. And I was lucky enough to be um, with Roche Genetech uh, through a partner And that was one of the bigger G Suite deployments. That just kind of opened the doors. I went from big G Suite deployment to big G Suite deployment because so few people had enterprise experience. And that was very exciting. I got to work with Veolia and Arrowkeed, all which are huge companies. And then one day I decided to start my own company and Netflix knocked on the door. And I was Mm -hmm. like, I can work with Netflix. (laughs) So I did that for two years as my own company. And you guys were kind enough to, you know, scout me and really look for me. So um, when I saw all the great work you guys were doing, that seemed just a natural fit. And one of our core tenants here at SADA is, you know, customer first and really doing the best thing for this customer and do the right thing. And all of our tenants are about the customer, but that one really resonated with me is I'd worked for a lot of different resellers and it was sometimes all about the bottom line, a little less about the customer. And you guys are always customer first. And that really resonated with me and something I wanted to, to be a part of. We're really happy you chose us. Our scouting game is pretty strong, you know, <laughs> and you happen to be, you happen to be in Austin as well, which is a is a becoming a huge office. Just our whole South Central presence, especially Austin, is is really big now. This is a little different than a typical cloud and clear because we want to be out there with this podcast, helping people get the best out of their remote working environment to be productive, to feel connected. So, can we talk about just some of your best sort of tips and tricks about? how to work in this new paradigm, which for some people it's the norm and we kind of take it for granted because we we have this technology we've been using a long time. We have a distributed workforce. But for people that are going in from working in the office all the time to being at home now or somewhere else, it's not the office. Uh, what, what, what are some uh, great strategies that we can uh, help them deploy? Yeah, so a lot of the things about that we do obviously is all around collaboration. But the biggest thing that I find exciting is Google has gone ahead and and given all of our customers, uh, education, business, and so forth, a free upgrade to Google Enterprise Meet. And what that means is you get 250 people that can now be on your calls where you didn't have that kind of bandwidth before. You can now record your meetings, which is really exciting. And we have an option called live stream, which allows you to have up to 100,000 people on the call. So even if it's it's a view only and everything, but um, that's a way you can broadcast your message to a large group of people. And we're seeing this with different groups doing events with live stream and so forth. And then one of the big exciting things that I don't even think people realize is because we own YouTube, we being Google, is that slides is integrated with your YouTube videos. So no more of having to leave your presentation to go to YouTube and you might have Beyonce or something else on there. This is just your video being presented right inside the presentation. To me, that's a huge selling point for Google Slides and a big part of that integration. And then as we all know, because we just did it five minutes ago, is we you can share documents and you can both be in the same document at the same time. And then something that's rarely remembered by all of us who've been on G Suite for a while is there's no more fear of, I left it on my desktop at my work computer. Everything is in the cloud through Google Drive, so you can access your files, you can share things with people. And Google has really spent a lot of time with the integration with Microsoft Office. Now, I hate to talk about the competitor, but 
I realize the whole world is not on G Suite, even though they should be. You still might have to work with people on Microsoft Office. Google has spent a lot of time having that integration factor on your mobile device through Google Drive that you can edit and share Microsoft Office files with other people. So again, at cost savings, because you're not having to buy Microsoft Office, you can still work with people with it. And then you have the whole collaboration features that you don't get unless you upgrade with Microsoft Office. So this is you know, our base product of even our free consumer product of Gmail can still use Google Drive, can still do all of these collaboration features. But if you're on a business account, now you have that meet enterprise level. So you can have 250 people and broadcast 100,000 people. Yeah. And then they've also really spent some time integrating it with Outlook. So if you do have a Google Meet and you need to use Outlook or, or interact with people on Outlook, we have a plugin that allows you to use Outlook um, with Meet. You don't have to be an entire Google customer with everything. Maybe you just have Drive because you really like yeah. that part of our product. You could still have, you know, this upgrades and stuff. So definitely like look into your licenses, make sure what you've got covered. And if you go to, it's called G Suite Learning Center, and you can just look it up on a Google search and you can look by product. And if you look at Meet, it'll t tell you all about the Outlook plugin and all that information for you. By, by the way, Kelly Wright and team have, uh, created sort of a new delivery deployment approach in the midst of uh, all this work from home demand and customers wanting to get onboarded quickly. We can deploy like tens of thousands of users on Meet, Chat and Drive only in like three or four days now. So it's been a big push. And I think there's a lot of help from the broader team because there's an adoption piece there, not just a technical integration, but this is a custom approach that's very different than, oh, you have three to six months to do this and you're deploying a broader part of the tool set. This is like, what do we need at minimum to get started and collaborate in a brand new paradigm? And um, like that package is pretty much ready to go. Yeah, it's been very exciting. We're already having a lot of interest from our government clients and our education clients because of that very initiative. So we're seeing with all the schools having to do online and um, classes and remote teaching, how do you do that? So because many of our education customers are had their licenses for free, they didn't have the meat aspect of the product or the 250. Now with this new upgrade that will expire on July 1st. So they get up to, I think it's only March, <laughs> yeah. all those months till July 1st um, to use the product to, to get their students you know, taught. And we're already seeing it in Washington, D.C. We're seeing it in New York. People are already leveraging these tools. So um, that five-day deployment, I think, is the whole entire time is what they came up with because they streamlined it down yeah. to their essentials, like you said. And we in the in the change management are offering training as part of that. So we're doing all kinds of parts to sort of make this a successful launch for our customers and our new customers in this situation. So I think we're going to see a lot of um, of of action with that. And it, like I said, with the um, relaxing of the HIPAA requirements and people being able to see their their patients through any of the web conferencing tools. Yeah that's going to be another big group of customers. And yeah. we're already seeing it with our vertical being healthcare. Um, a lot of our healthcare clients are interested in this. Yeah. Let's talk about the culture shift. And again, we've been working in this paradigm for a long time, uh, but it makes a big difference when you're completely distributed that the video call becomes the default. And I love that because it's not exactly the same as being in the same room with someone, but it's sure, uh, sure beats like not seeing them at all, right? It's like sort of the second best thing to being face to face with someone in real life. And um, it, we 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 spend a lot of time with our with our with our customers getting them to that paradigm shift, don't we? It's a huge thing, and it's so funny. Is I've been so impressed by the bandwidth. Um, because, you know, Hurricane Katrina, um, a lot of the things that have happened in our past, you couldn't make a phone call because the network couldn't handle it. We're really seeing with the 2.5 billion servers that Google had 
there really hasn't been any kind of um, distraction or in, in these calls. I haven't yeah. seen any props or anything else. And that 99.9% .9 of time, you're really seeing it in real time what that means. Because I have friends and family have been trying to call me through other systems and they're having issues. Nothing was ready to scale that quickly between Friday yeah. and Monday to, to handle that kind of volume. Like we found out Friday we were going to be staying home and Monday we were business as usual. Now I will yeah. say it's been, it's added a new level of intimacy. I, I mean, because we were all in our business suits and, and ready for business, we're seeing all <laughs> caps and t-shirts and it's been a very different paradigm. I thought yeah. with, with all the activity. That yeah. P part of it is just like getting over yourself in the stigma of like, oh, I can't have my kids or my pets or, you know, my uh, art. Like, no, this is you. This is all of us sort of an expression of our personalities. You're right. It is intimacy in a completely different way. We're all inviting each other to our living rooms, our bedrooms, our family rooms. I am seeing um, so many babies and pets. It's not even funny. And yeah. I think we all remember the classic Today Show where the professor was talking and his two-year-old came into the room. And we all yes. saw that. And that was, if you think, now three years ago. So this is the norm, right? This is yes. the new normal. Is now your kids, your dogs, your pets are all going to be in the picture with you. And so just like I think, you know, meat changes the phone call to much more intimate and uh, engaging experience. I think so drive and of course doc sheets, etc. I have found that when you're working on things that are complex with multiple people, instead of emailing back and forth, like I feel like working inside of a document is the most productive, useful paradigm of a new initiative, an SOW, whatever. Uh, a new process you're trying to create. So I'm, I always encourage, and I and we wrote it in the company handbook as well. Like we always encourage people to work in a document when they're working through a problem. And so that's another thing that people are are starting to understand that uh, you can get a lot done in an asynchronous fashion, where somebody creates a doc, makes a bunch of comments, somebody else goes in. It doesn't have to be in that moment. They can do it later, right? Whenever the different time zones, etc. So solving problems in a doc has become like one of my new favorite um, things to, to ways to work in the last couple of years. Well, I think Google said it themselves, a single source of truth. If anybody's ever seen version 2.25 and version 2.26.2, we've all dealt with that back and forth of, of sending files and then updating them and sending them back. And how much time that takes. I mean, I can mm -hmm. send you a document. It may take you, with our two-hour time difference, 24 hours to get it back to me. Um, mm -hmm. But now what we're seeing is I literally sent you a document 10 minutes before we started, and you were like, I've got it, I'm in it, and you were making That's changes it. that I could see. Now, a lot of people, this scares them, but because we have revision history, you can go and see what each person did, color-coded, mm -hmm. so you see exactly what happened. And if you don't like my changes, you can always restore back to a version before that. And that's one of the big exciting things, I think. But of all the, the different applications, and there's a lot, is forms. If you haven't really mm. tried forms, that's really the hugest a, a game changer coming from Microsoft Office because we had Word and we had forms you could make inside of Word with fields and things like that. But our forms are literally a form that acts like a database yep. and of a, of a Google Sheet. So nothing we had in Microsoft Office compares to this is I can make a form, you can fill it out through your email, it's actually embedded in the email, and then you can have those results in a sheet in real time. To me, that was yeah. the most exciting difference between the two products and really made me see that um, Google was a trailblazer. You know what I love inside of spreadsheets as well is revision history in a cell. Like who changed this cell? I love that. Like this, any cell you can be like, 
oh, it was Mike. Uh huh. And this is what he wrote. Like, it's so it's so cool. And look, we just prepared for our first ever like formal board meeting with our new uh, board members who um, we all met during our all hands, uh, which is this Wednesday. And we did it, of course, all in drive and docs. And um, the whole thing was collaborated on with the executive team. And, and the way we did it was we shared out this drive just for this sort of Q1 meeting with them on their assigned email addresses that we gave them. And we couldn't have, I don't think we could have prepared with that, with that, with any other tool, but I like how we're using it in practice to actually run something as important as a board meeting in our first board meeting. And I remember all the data gathering exercises, all the contribution of content, like I just, how else would we have done it? Like it would have been so different. Well, it's funny as I show this all the time, the collaboration and people are writing over each other and stuff like that. And it scares some people. But to me, I think about what if you're in a room, I might talk over you, you might interrupt me, right? That's a real, real time collaboration feels like. And it might be uncomfortable in a document because we're used to being a sole author and not having other people in it with us. But imagine the ideas that it unleashes. This is true brainstorming mm -hmm. in real time. So to me, I kind of welcome all of that interruption and change within the document because you're seeing people really react to the content and put their own totally. in there. And let's talk about, I think, the importance of chat, right? Chat is essentially GA now, replacing Hangouts. And it's a much better architecture. You can just feel how it's just, you know, more modern uh, feeling. But again, being distributed where you can't see people, chat is such a great tool that expresses your presence. Like, are you available? Not available? Can I reach you right now for something that's sort of tactical? Um, and again, I think uh, Slack and some other tools have changed this paradigm in the last several years, but I remember when this concept of like being online and being present was something that people felt like, oh, invaded their personal space or something like this. But now we're learning, especially this week, this last couple of weeks, wow, is it a powerful tool just to be able to reach out to someone. Just just like you would sitting in an office be like, hey, hey Heather, you, it's like just like that, you know, but like <laughs> same thing thing about hangouts chat which is the new product that they've just rolled out is integrated with our email is unlike slack you're not having to go to a different platform to interact with people it is integrated yeah. with your email it's integrated with g suite and you also have the mobile app but the other exciting thing about it especially if you're on um hangouts chat is the room so you can have a room mm -hmm. have an open like, let's have an open discussion. You know, you were talking about a little bit about the paradigm shift, but what about our mental health? You know, we really mm. haven't addressed that. And this is something that Hangouts Chat has really, to me, played a huge part in, is in, if you're in an office, you can turn, like you just said, to the person next to you. But we've been having virtual coffees, you know, based on mm. the market, right? And we've been coming together. And that's, again, how I saw a lot of people's pets and little ones is, <laughs> They were had virtual coffee with us. And this was exciting because we had a room and you could come in and out of the room if you wanted to. You could have it on a meet and you know have it at that time. But that whole idea of someone could be there at any time, come in and out, just like our little cafe inside the office. I can go get my coffee and I might jump bump into John or Mary, but I can leave the cafe and then John and Mary may leave or come out. It just doesn't matter. So that idea of a room and you can kind of participate yeah. participate in it being available all the time to you is really exciting. And then because it's integrated with our other products, you can put in a video. I've seen so many cat videos. It's not even funny. <laughs> you, can, you can put emojis, you can do um, gifts. There's all kinds of things, just like a Slack, where you can put in um, stuff from your Google Drive, and then you can collaborate it right there inside of your Hangouts chat. And it can be one-on-one -on -one with just you and myself, a group chat, or you can have that room ability. So that, to me, has been a huge game changer from just regular Hangouts and up that are free inside of our Gmail, is now we can have a room, and it can be That's a right. room, you know, hey, let's, you know, have this Hangouts chat room 
to troubleshoot any problems you're having with working from home? No, I think just, you know, in our conversations, we've seen what Drive and all the collaborative document formats chat and meet in combination, even if you're not using G Suite for email and calendaring, like just those three things, how they completely change the way we show up when we're not, you know, sitting together in one space. And there's no test like the present around how, how to do this. And we totally take it for granted, but we realize that 90% of organizations out there are not set up to work this way. We're here, we're at, uh, at their service. And, um, you know, I think uh, it might be like this for several weeks still or a couple of months, right? We don't know how long this is going to last, but we want to make sure people are, they feel connected, um, healthy, physically and mentally, and also can feel productive and get their work done and serve their own clients and, and connect with their family members and if their students to continue learning right in their education journey. So uh, we love being being there and available for, for everyone in the U.S. and Canada who may, need, uh, who may need our help. So I wanted to kind of get this out there quickly, but oh, what do you think some last words of wisdom for anybody undergoing a complete change in how they work? What would you, what would you have to say? I think it's really important to get outside. As, as silly as that sounds, as we're all like now kind of feel tied to our desk in our home. So make sure that you get outside occasionally just for the vitamin D alone and um, make sure that you're, you know, connecting with people. It's very easy to get isolated working from home. So even if it's, you know, our competitor, you know, have a video chat or whatever, but make sure that you're talking to someone daily and not isolating yourself. I think that's one of the biggest things that I'm taking away from all this is I've worked from home for seven years, but I am seeing a lot of my friends and even my colleagues suffer a little bit from the isolation. And it's it's tough. You you have to really make an effort and um, you forget that you bump into your neighbors and see people when you go to the mailbox and go to the grocery mm -hmm. store and go out to dinner. And now all of those avenues are not there. So I've seen... I've seen more people out on our street and than ever before as well. Of course, we want to keep our distance, but even when I went out like with the kids and it's almost like people want to connect in this new way without getting super close. But I think, look, we are, to your point, we're social beings. It is part of our happiness formula for most of us to have that level of going outside, connecting, interacting. And uh, that is a great, fantastic reminder. And it's a great uh, way to end this episode of Cloud and Clear. We'll try to get this out as fast as we can. Heather, thank you so much for being our guest. Thank you. I really appreciate the time you gave me. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Cloud and Clear. Check the show notes for links to this week's topics. And don't forget to connect with us on Twitter at Cloud and Clear and our website, sada.com. Be sure to rate and review the show on your favorite podcast app.